It's time for the Financial Crisis Talk Center with Ken Gross and David Einstandig from Fav Gross. Credit card debt is number one. I think, it, I view it as financial cancer. 40% of your gross income is going to just pay the debt service. You got no chance of getting out. I would give up my credit score to get rid of debt. Here's your host, Ken Gross. Good morning. Welcome to the Financial Crisis Talk Center. It is time to talk taxes today. This is going to be, you know, it's like, actually, I said to my wife, you know, the show today is about taxes. It's going to be a two-part segment about the truth about how to go about solving tax problems. And she goes, taxes. (laughs) I said, you know, but the truth of the matter is there's a lot of questions out there. And there's a lot of fog out there when it comes to the right way to handle tax problems. So I thought that's what we should do. We're going to do both segments on tax problems, tax issues. There was just a recent article that was put out out in the uh, Wall Street Journal yesterday that we're going to talk about. Brian Small, good morning. Good morning, Ken. I'm I'm thinking, though, while we're talking about taxes, we should mention that it's going to be football season soon. That's all I'm saying. I know that everybody's into baseball and that the Tigers are doing great. However, football is my sport. I mean, people are excited, I'm sure. I mean, I, I look at it with kind of a mixed emotion because it means summer's kind of coming to the end. Like this show, the radio show today is, is, is today, but this is going to air on TV 20 on the 18th and the 25th. And by then, we're going to be way into the football season. If So if you're watching this show in the next couple of weeks, you're going to see – more about football, but it also means summer's kind of coming to the end. But you know, that's they do why... tax football tickets too, by the way. So to, to segue back into tax, well, we'll se- well, I have a better segue. We have got Jenny Lingles back with us. She's our tax expert over at Thav Gross. It's good to have you, Jenny. Good morning. This Ted. is your first uh, radio show TV appearance since you had the baby. Yes, yes, so that's I'm, true. I'm glad to have you back. Thank you. The baby's now, now 14 years old. <laughs> Right. Very funny, Brian. Well, Jenny, Jenny, Jenny sometimes <laughs> takes her time about certain things and other things she moves. When it's a tax matter, she moves with great efficiency and speed. Alfreda's back. Good morning. Good morning, Alfreda. You? Actually, we have a birthday wish today, Alfreda. Oh, oh we goodness. do. It, but it's not to a person. It's to an entity. Johnny Pomodoro's, our base-level, most loyal gift certificate sponsor over the last two years, is celebrating its fifth birthday. On Monday, the 12th of August, so if you're listening to the show, this is the opportunity for on Monday, it's 20% off at Johnny Pomodoro's on everything except wine, beer, and and sale items. Uh, They're they're over at uh, 14 Mile and Middle Belt. We talk about them all the time. They they do a great job, great food selection, uh, party selection, everything you could possibly (laughs) need. So I thought maybe when we go out to break, you would <laughs> sing a happy birthday uh, tune. Okay, I have for to Je- think of what for, version. For, for Johnny <laughs> Pomodoros. Okay, so that, so we've got that covered. A uh, couple other uh, housekeeping matters. Our first seminar, just kind of like what you said, Brian, is it is, I don't want to say fall is in the air, but late summer is in the air, going back to school sales, everything's going on. So I've scheduled our first return to fall seminar It is going to be on Tuesday, September 17th from 6.30 to 8 at our offices. It's going to be called Resolving Your Finances. It will be an update on where things are at from the standpoint of dealing with financial issues. And we're going to expand it in the, the fall season to not only cover the issue of if you have too much debt, what's the best strategy to get rid of it, but also we're going to add a solid estate planning component to that because what we've noticed is people are extremely lax in addressing estate planning issues. So we're going to have Eric Glick uh, from our office who's an estate planner participate on a regular basis, and he'll make a presentation at that seminar as well. One of the important things to note about these seminars that we're having is there are certain things that are happening in in the world of finance and debt and debt relief that are coming to an end as in your ability to short sell without tax ramifications. See, segueing again. Unless it gets extended. Unless it gets extended. Or other things that 
that you have to recognize that you might need to do by the end of this year. And the end of the year is coming up really fast in the world of housing and debt. So if you are in any sort of financial crisis or financial problems thinking about short selling your house, this is a seminar you have to attend. Yeah, you actually, you have a very good point. There's two things. If you're going to short sell, we don't know if the law is going to get extended. If you're underwater and you're going to short sell, you need to get that closed before the end of the year. So if you haven't made the decision yet, you need to examine the issue and make the decision on an immediate basis. You can't even wait for the seminar. You should call us, get in here, and let us do the analysis as to whether it makes sense. I wouldn't wait to mid-September to then make the decision to short sell, put it on the market after the kids are back in school. That's the harder time to sell a piece of property. You need to get that done sooner. Then again, maybe Congress will do something smart and extend that law another year. <laughs> I'm sorry, you but, just used yeah. the word Congress and smart in the same <laughs> sentence. Uh, it's a tough one, I know. Yes, it is. It's going to happen one day. It's either that or we're just going to repeal Congress you know, and just say, let's not have a Congress. They don't do anything anyway. Let's that save would... the money. Save the aggravation. But what would yeah, CNN, would what would Fox idea. News and CNN do without our Congress well, to make fun of? Maybe they would go off the air and we could get some quality programming on television. Ooh, yeah, they can talk that's... about human interest stories. So. Yeah, that, that, that'll keep everybody awake. All they really <laughs> like are politics and crime. You know, other than that, I, I don't think there's much to watch in the news. Pub I guess maybe public interest stories and nice stories like that is what runs during the day. I don't know. All right, so let's start. Let's let's get into the taxes because here, here's how we're going to do the taxes. We're going to walk through. We're going to give you this one news article. Then we're going to walk through the issues. I'm going to do a true truth <laughs> or fiction. Then we'll walk through the issues on what your options are in solving tax pro a tax problem. And then we're going to do a case study at the uh, at second half of the second segment. All right, there's a ridiculous. I don't say ridiculous, but it was an alarming article I saw in the Wall Street Journal yesterday called Small Business in IRS Sites. And what they're doing is they're sending out 20,000 letters to small businesses saying, in essence, we think you may be underreporting your income. This is not an audit letter saying we're going to examine your return but we want you to think through what you're doing, and if you've made a mistake on reporting your income, we strongly advise you to take ac affirmative action, period, i.e., before we audit you and bust your you-know-whats. Uh, why are they doing this? It's a tough one. The real answer is they want money to try and narrow the tax gap, which is something like $465 billion dollars. I'll get the exact number when we come back from the break. We're going to take a break. When we come back. We're going to wrap up on this issue. I'll tell you why they've decided to send these letters and who they're targeting. And then we're going to go into truth or fiction on tax problems. We'll be back after the break. I couldn't get out of the car. I couldn't run or exercise. I couldn't work. Dr. Lewis Radden believes that pain shouldn't have to wait. His Spine Specialist of Michigan is a comprehensive center dedicated to helping you manage pain now. Expect the latest techniques and personalized care. Why suffer another minute? He's the best. I tell people that he's the one that saved my life. Make your appointment with Dr. Radden. Call 248-792-9496. If your house is underwater, please listen to this important message. The rules have finally changed. We're seeing some great loan modifications with reduced principal, and short sales are easier to get done than people think. The biggest problems I see are people wait too long or they try and do it themselves. There are no second chances. If you're underwater in your house, call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. No one ever thinks that a serious injury can happen to them, but it can and it does, and it can happen to you. And when it does, you need a fighter in that courtroom for you. Call me, Ben Johnson. Automobile accident, police misconduct, medical malpractice, product liability. You know what you're up against, how hard it is to get answers. When all you want is justice, call me, Ben Johnson. Whatever your legal crisis, I will fight for you. Call me today. Do you have tax problems, unfiled returns, facing levies on wages in your property? You need an expert, not a cartoon character or salesman. Thav Gross is your solution. You need to look at the big picture. That's what we do. We develop a plan that's right for you. I had major tax problems. 
I didn't know what to do. We did. We sat down together and solved your tax problem. No more letters, no more phone calls. They saved me. Call Fav Gross, 888-235-HELP. Going from hourly to salary seemed like a good career move, but now you're working 60 hours a week instead of 40, and you aren't getting paid any of that extra time. You're stuck, right? Wrong. You can be on salary and still be entitled to overtime. If you've been wrongly denied such pay, you may be entitled to that and more. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Uh, welcome back. All right, so we're talking taxes. IRS sends out a letter, 20,000 businesses saying, hey, we think you're underreporting your income. How did they come up with this? Well, they now have access to credit card purchases by business names. They can go and research this information themselves. So they've accessed the information, and when they come up and they come to the conclusion basically of saying, hey, how can 98% of your sales be credit card? Where's your cash sales? Because what they do is they look at the total volume of credit card sales, they compare it to the gross receipts that are reported on the return, and they say something's not right. So what this is is it's a message to everyone out there saying if you're underreporting your income because you think you only need to report your credit card sales and you can just take that cash out of the drawer, which is illegal anyway. You certainly are not allowed to do that. But it's a message to you saying they now have access to your credit card sales so they know how much you're selling. So unless you're going to be able to make out the strong case, like Jenny said to me in the break, unless you can make out the, the, the case that, well, 98% of our sales are on credit card, nobody uses cash anymore, you could be putting yourself into a problem. So it's an, it's an eye-opener. Yeah, but the IRS is so antiquated. I mean, their whole concept that people use cash anymore, people don't use cash. I mean, I, I can't. I don't even carry cash anymore. I carry that little debit card, and that's it. Oh my gosh, I'm using that Square app where you can just walk into a place who's um, connected to it, and you can pay from your phone. Oh, let's let's do a poll here. So you don't use cash. <laughs> don't use cash. Jenny, do you use cash? Never. Alfredo, you Limited. don't use cash. Limited. Joe, do you use cash? So so. Dave. <laughs> I think I'm, what I'm that the means. only one. I use cash. I gave up my credit cards. I don't like. I don't like plastic at all. I like to take the money out of my pocket when I pay for something, so I feel the pain. And I, and I, when I hand over plastic, I don't feel the pain. I like to yeah. feel. Pain. I agree with your logic and the way you deal with it, but you're you're still not normal in that situation. Most people don't use cash. I, I just want to say before I get attacked, and I, I appreciate the fact that I didn't, it's not an age factor. Because I was, I was high-tech oriented. I'm fine with all the stuff of doing things the fast way. I'm just saying, for me, it works a lot better using the green stuff so that I know that when it leaves my pocket, well, it's gone. When you, when you go to the grocery store and you, and you pull out a $100 bill, it hurts a whole lot more than pulling out that little piece of plastic, even Ab though it's the same money. Absolutely. <laughs> That's true. I use 20s because I go to the ATM machine, though. You I go to the ATM machine, is... machine, machine, machine? I know the ATM I go once a week to the ATM machine. The a I'm, I'm disciplined. Right, I've got to stop you. An ATM is all you need to say. It's an automatic teller machine. So you're saying automatic teller machine machine. Point well taken. <laughs> Are you engaged or engaged to be married? It's the same thing, except you've, you're now redundant. How do you say it? Jenny, do you say engaged or engaged to be She's married? She's married. I'm I would engaged. say engaged. You would say engaged, Alfreda? Engaged. I had that debate back years ago with uh, Bonnie, and it was always engaged to be married. And if you keep your ears open, a lot of people say engaged to be married. And I go, oh, what else are they engaged for? Sometimes people are disengaged. <laughs> All right, now, let's go, let, let, let's go on to... Okay. Uh, back to tax problems. You would know that better than us. So, um, let's go back to tax problems. Truth or, truth or fiction in terms of... Uh, taxes. Here, here, here's your questions. You guys answer. We'll do a quick answers. Since the IRS was unfair to the Tea Party, they will be afraid to t collect tax from me. False. Fiction. <laughs> fiction. Absolute uh, fiction. Okay. Pure fiction. Failing to file a tax return is a crime. True. 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 Taxes are unconstitutional, so I don't have to pay. Absolutely true. I mean, how oh, many, no, wait. No, that's false. I'm sorry. I was going to say how many, like, uh, I would say many have argued that. Yeah. However, I don't think just, anyone's just got been into successful that thus far. Just got into that debate with one of my clients the other day, and I said, well, enjoy Leavenworth. Yeah. <laughs> put, put it this way. 
the percentage of winning is worse than the Chica- uh, the Chicago White Sox on that argument. It's a zero percent chance of winning when you go to the government and say it's unconstitutional. Mr. Blutarski, your grade point average is zero. All right, next point one. Next zero, one. Because I zero. keep moving. If I don't pick up the certified letter, I can't be responsible for what the letter says. False. That is so false. <laughs> for How, the most part, false. Yeah. How many people ju- automatically think in terms of well? I get the call all the time. They sent me a certified letter. I haven't picked it up. And I say to them, well, what does the letter say? I don't know. I haven't picked up the letter. I said, well, then how can, we, how can we plan and come up with a plan of action to solve the problem if we don't know what the problem is? Well, I think I know what the problem is. I haven't filed my tax returns for four years. You got to pick up the letter. You got to pick up the letter and deal with the problem. You can't hide underneath the ground. It's not going to work. They'll find you. They have they have scopes. They'll come and yeah. dig you back up if they need to. <laughs> IRS they will dig you back right, up. Next one. IRS can't find me or my bank account. Good luck with that what? one. The IRS can find anything. Yep. Discover can find you. <laughs> Haven't you figured that out? Yeah, yeah. If, if you miss a credit card payment, all of a sudden you're driving to work in the morning, you're having you your coffee, off. and they call your cell phone. No, better yet, they don't call your cell phone. You get a call from your mother. <laughs> Discover just called me. You have yeah, lived that's here true. Years. That's like, a really like, great tactic. <laughs> <laughs> that is the absolute. I like that. That is the absolute worst. And we're not just saying it's just Discover. We're just using Discover as an example of another credit card company. So if Discover's out there. Don't send me any letters. I don't want to talk to you, and I don't want to take the time responding. In our opinion, you guys do that. I'm just making sure I'm careful on that. If I ignore the IRS, they will eventually levy you lean and seize my income and assets. True. True, Alex, and I'll take X for 200 no. okay. <laughs> Filing a knowingly false tax return is a crime. True. True. Okay. The national firms that advertise on TV and satellite radio must be legitimate and effective to to help me. False. False, and we'll talk about that more. <laughs> I thought they're all out of they're business. Effective they're effective at getting your money. They're really effective at, they're, they, are, they are the best. I would like to hire them if I wanted to run a company that could have somebody talk to someone on a phone 500 miles away from that person and talk them into giving them a credit card with paying $7,500 based upon making them promises on a phone. If that, I mean, think about it. Those salesmen are slick. The problem you couldn't is talk our malpractice me into giving insurance you, wouldn't like that very you much. <laughs> no. You couldn't talk me into giving you a credit card on the phone for $7,500 if you, if you convinced me that you had a picture of my family with, uh, and they were being held hostage. <laughs> well, maybe you could, but I don't know. But I'd stop payment on it later. You like your job. What you don't like is the way your boss has been treating you. He's making comments about how you look instead of your work, and he's been touching you inappropriately. If you complain, is he allowed to fire you? Absolutely not. Unwelcome sexual comments, advances in contact are illegal in the workplace. Make him pay. Gold Star Law is here to help you through your employment law problem, whatever it is. Gold Star Law, protecting employees' rights. Call 1-800-WAGES-10 for a free consultation today. Every family has the family meeting. And we all know what that means. Dad's got dementia. What are we going to do? What's the care plan that the family has in place? Usually they don't or they struggle with a care plan. When you go home tonight and you talk to your tax person and you talk to your financial person, say, what's the plan that you have in place? And as soon as they don't give you an answer, give me a call because I can do it for you. Financially strapped, do you want to save your home? It's all about preserving future income. Bankruptcy is one option. When it's right, it's the least costly, most effective way to save your home, eliminate a second mortgage, and wipe out credit card debt. But you need to address the problem now. We help people with bankruptcy. Call the experts. We're Thav Gross. Our firm will solve your problem. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. Double action. Shooting center and gun shop. For the largest selection of guns, accessories, and ammunition. Double action is your only pro gun shop. And now you can train with the best in our basic CCW course. With the most comprehensive curriculum, the best resources, and most accomplished staff. 
Don't be fooled by cheap imitations. Double Action is the only place to get your CCW or renewal. Double Action. We're on DeQuinder in Madison Heights. Carrying too much debt? Dump your debt. Call Thav Gross. You don't need to be broke, and you don't need to hit rock bottom. If you have income and you're struggling with debt, dump it. Think about the next 10 or 20 years. If you do what the banks tell you, you'll have nothing to retire with. There is a solution. Don't waste your future. Call Fav Gross. We're experts at eliminating credit card debt. 888-235-HELP. That's 888-235-HELP. All right, let's recognize our sponsors. Uh, they're so critical to the show, and we really appreciate their support and everything else. Uh, Van Johnson Law, Gold Star Law, Samasco Law, Double Action Shooting Range and Gun Shop, Spine Specialists of Michigan. Really appreciate the support. Also want people to know that uh, we remind people that the show is airing on TV 20 at 1030 in the mornings on Sundays. All right, now let's go back to tax problems. We covered the truth or fiction. Now let's actually get down to the nitty gritty. Problem number one, I have unfiled tax returns. Jenny, what's the solution? It's very simple. You need to go have those returns filed and then uh, usually if you're going to owe, take them into somebody to take a look at um, first to figure out what type of options you have and also to take a look at whether or not the IRS may have filed those returns for you. Yeah, but I hear clients come back to me, and like I have a client that's sometimes I call him Mr. Weiner, and he goes, Ew, but I don't want to do that. If I go and file the tax returns, Jenny, I don't have the money to pay. I would rather not file the tax returns. Give me a break here. Is that the client that the IRS filed for him, and instead of owing 20000 they came back and said he owed $1.7 million? Oh, don't do that to me, Jenny. I can't even hear I And then we spent two years that. fixing that problem. That's one of them. That you know, is one of them. Jenny, here, here, a question for you about these unfiled tax returns. Sometimes you get into a situation where you've got a client who's habitually not filed their tax returns. They've gotten scared away from filing 11 years ago. And they just think that if they ignore it, the problem will go away or they'll drop dead, one of the two. So <laughs> how, how do you get the information necessary so that they can file those tax returns? Because people don't keep documents. Well, the first thing that we do is we go back to the IRS and find out how far back their records go. The IRS does have a reporting system of any W-2s, 1099s, interest, mortgage interest that was um, reported under your Social Security number for that year. There's a lot of things that they don't have. And what I tell my clients, it comes up a lot with the self-employed individuals, is at this point you have to file a tax return. So a good faith estimate is going to be the best that you can do. So you get so you gather the information that's available even from the IRS to, to build the return, and then you just fill in the gaps. The, the point is, if you make a good faith es estimate and do your best at preparing the return and filing it, you've now filed the return. You've taken that whole problem off the table. If IRS wants to audit the return, then you'll deal with that problem down the road. That's not that great of a likelihood. The strong, the, in, most of the time, what the return is filed, it goes in. Now, so, so if I file my return, even if I'm 10 years down the road, if the IRS hasn't prosecuted me yet, have I eliminated my crime, so to yes, speak? Yes, yes, you have. It's called voluntary compliance. If you, if you step up and you take the action before uh, a couple agents show up right, uh, they do. to your door uh, indicating to you that you're now a target of a criminal investigation. If you get there ahead of time and you file the return, generally speaking, you have nothing to worry about. Now, if you're, uh, there could be an exception. If uh, I suppose, I suppose, a, if you were a Tea Party member, you would disagree with that. You'd say, "Oh yeah, if I was a Tea Party member, they'd still prosecute me." Uh, but I, th I think they probably wouldn't right now. Uh, but generally, rule is there's a voluntary compliance rule with the IRS. If you step up to the plate and take care of things, they're not really interested in putting you in jail. But now, you filed the returns. Whether you were behind and you filed the returns or whether you've been filing timely <laughs> as you should all along, this is the biggest problem. You're short of cash. You haven't paid in all the tax through withholding or estimates, and you now have a tax liability. And this is the common problem. This is the anxiety that hangs over a tremendous number of people in the United States. And the key is, 
addressing the problem to eliminate the anxiety. You shouldn't shorten your lifespan by worrying about the IRS. You realistically, if you get the problem under control, you can then sleep better and you, you, you eliminate that anxiety. So what are your options and what are the range of things that you can do? And Jenny and I have put together an outline, and Jenny outlined really four, you know, four things, and I added a fifth. One was installment agreements. Another one was you can request to be what's called CNC, which is currently not collectible, and we're going to expand on these. You can file for an offer of in, in compromise, and we're going to use a, a case study to uh, explain how that works. You can discharge income taxes in bankruptcy, which is Brian's expertise. My favorite. And then you can, and then the other one that I added was you can run and hide, move to Russia, and hang out with Snowden if you want, because uh, <laughs> the countries don't have treaties that cover tax issues. You forgot the drop date. <laughs> yeah, Drops yeah. Taxes. I, I, forgot, I forgot about that one. All right now. How do you determine which strategy to, to employ? Jenny, what's the first thing that you need to do to know which range of options somebody should explore? The first thing that I need to know is how much they owe. If they owe less than $25,000 or less, it, it can be very simple. We can just set up a 72-month payment plan. The IRS will accept that um, with very little information. If it's under 50000 again, they can do 72-month payments. If they do it by direct debit, again, the IRS is just going to verify they can afford to make that payment. However, if they can't actually afford what that monthly payment turns out to be, we would look at an installment agreement, which is called Based on Ability to Pay, which would mean we would look at current income and IRS allowable expenses to see what the IRS would want from them on a monthly basis. Right, so that's the situation where you owe more than fifty grand, Or you can't afford a, a 72 you can't afford month the payment. payment. Correct. And then, th then you have to examine what their income is versus what their expenses are. And then what's this you have to you it's not just what their expenses are, it's the expenses that Uncle Sam allows you. That's correct. Well, um, who, who decides how much my house payment should Uncle be? Sam. I, I uh, it's my house. <laughs> the it's, it's ridiculous. It's it's kind of I can't really quite figure out um, how they've gotten their facts because they seem to be somewhat skewed, but they go by county, for instance, in Michigan and by how many people are in your family and they cap what your housing oh, and so, utilities. So are you be. telling me if I'm in Oakland County I get a bigger housing allowance than if I if I live in Wayne County? Yes. Is that discrimination? That's ridiculous. It, it actually is, especially when you take into consideration the fact that homeowners insurance and car insurance and things like that are more expensive in Wayne County right now. Do they now. give you a bigger allowance for those items? In they do not. So well, it I seems think you they should do something about I this. I think I should, too. These are the <laughs> same rules I've that we play within the bankruptcy times. court, too. Yeah, the same set of standards. It's ridiculous. Well, we but talk about it, it may be ridiculous, but it is what it is. Our job when it's a tax problem is figure out what the numbers are and what we can do with the problem. You can't just sit there saying, well, I don't like your rules, therefore I'm going to choose not to play by them. That will get you nowhere when it comes to IRS. <laughs> Thank you.